We've all seen them. We all know who they are. You walk into Walmart, and they're everywhere. I'm not talking about hipsters. I'm not even talking about bacon. I'm talking about rednecks. And believe it or not, I actually consider myself a bit of a redneck. I don't know what you're thinking. You're wearing a bow tie. But when I get home every day, I take off the cape and transform into my mild-mannered alter ego, Bubba. And I believe that all of us, deep down inside, even if for some of us, like Donovan, it's deep, deep, deep down inside, <laughs> behind all the vests and the ties and the fancy hats and fashion, we all have a desire to be a redneck. Even if it's just for a moment, so we can get a glimpse of that shining redneck done in the sky. And today, I'm going to show you how you can accomplish that by teaching you how to be a redneck. <laughs> I'm going to do this by showing you how to dress like a redneck and how to beard like a redneck. So let's go ahead and jump on in. How do you dress like a redneck? Well, it's very simple, by using redneck fashion. <laughs> you know you're at Walmart when you see a man in a bath towel poncho. So at Rednecks, we like to keep things pretty simple, right? Complicated belongs in a shelf over here where you occasionally take a pot shot at it with a shotgun when you're angry. So we split it up into summer and winter fashion. Let's go ahead and get started with summer fashion. So what do you need to know about how to dress like a redneck in the summer? Well, first of all, sleeves are completely and totally useless. <laughs> Number two, shoes are equally useless. Now my grandfather is undeniably, without a doubt, a redneck. And when he was a child, he was coming out of this house in bare feet, as a redneck does, right? We just established that. And so there are some fellas there who have been working on his house, and one of them throws a cigarette right there on the ground. A cigarette, I'm sorry. And so he's walking out, and he steps on it in his bare feet. And so his dad, my great-grandfather, is coming home. He walks in the driveway, and he sees my grandfather standing on one foot, clutching the other, hopping up and down and screaming like there's no tomorrow. Now he walks up and says, son, what's the matter with you? I burnt my tongue on a cigarette, Pa! Well, let me tell you something. My great-grandfather went to church every Sunday, never touched a drop of liquor in his life, and most certainly did not smoke or let his children smoke. And what he thought he heard my grandfather say was he burnt his tongue on a cigarette. <laughs> and my grandfather barely survived the situation, but thankfully he was able to explain he didn't burn his tongue on a cigarette, he burnt his toe on a cigarette. So it's potentially painful, but it is a redneck requirement. So now let's take a look at winter fashion. Well, um, you can put sleeves back on. And you can put some shoes back on, specifically boots. What you really need to know about winter fashion is you have two articles of clothing that you will put on and never take off. The first is the toboggan. The second, long johns. More commonly referred to today as thermal underwear. These will save your life. I'm not even kidding. Below freezing outside, life's over. So, etiquette. Sorry, etiquette. You do need to take your toboggan off once. In church or when you're praying. Alright? That's as far as it goes. But please don't take the long johns off. We don't need to see that. So that is literally how you dress like a redneck. Fairly simple. So now let's take a look at what I'm sure was the first thing that came to your mind as soon as I said the word redneck. Facial hair. Now, why was that the first thing that popped into your head? Well, because of these fellows right here. They have made the beard not only famous, but very profitable as well. But the redneck beard is a tradition that extends far beyond Duck Dynasty. And how do you get a redneck beard? Because you see a lot of yubby folk walking around with their own beard. But here's the thing, when they wake up in the morning, they're shaving, they're snipping, they're trimming, they're poking, and they're twisting, and they're twirling. To be a redneck and have a redneck beard, all you have to do is let it grow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I would like to caveat this for a moment. This was mainly aimed at the guys. Ladies, please don't try to grow a beard. 
That's just wrong, okay? <laughs> and also, I would like to give you some attributes of the beard. Among the many of the attributes of the beard, stroking it increases your concentration and mental capacities. The beard is a natural bear repellent while camping or wandering in the forest. It fits on your face like a glove. And dramatically increases your wood chopping ability. So now we've seen how to beard like a redneck. So today, I've showed you how to be a redneck by showing you how to dress like a redneck and by showing you how to beard like a redneck. Remember, in the summertime, take your shoes and your sleeves off. In the wintertime, put them back on, obviously, and wear a toboggan and long chunks. But before I let you go, I would like to share with you a guide to how to know if you're yuppie or not. Now, let me explain the yuppie. Yuppie is the opposite of redneck, right? In my family, we call them city folk. And you need to know if you're city folk, right? Because if you are, you need to follow the two steps I've given you to become a redneck. So, if you can't tell the difference between a buck and a doe, you might be a yuppie. If you put your Christmas decorations up for the week of Christmas and then take them down, you might be a yuppie. If you graduated high school or intend to, you might be a yuppie. And finally, if you've ever stood on top of a pile of cedar brush, poured five gallons of gas on top of it, bent over and lit it, resulting in an explosion, which gave you third degree burns and a crushed wrist, just own it, you're a yuppie. You would be surprised how many people do this. I'm not even kidding. My dad did that. And then we're checking out at the Sam's Club. And the lady behind the counter has a bandage on her arm. And she sees my dad's bandage. She says, sir, what happened to your arm? I blew myself up with five gallons of gas. Really? Me too! <laughs> so if there's one thing that I would like you to remember today, it is this. Use diesel gas instead of regular gasoline to start brush fires. <laughs>